wanted to just talk about a few things that's actually currently happening in, in the market today. So if you didn't know, if you wasn't watching, the Dow Jones finished 765 points up for the day. Uh, NASDAQ finished 239 points up for the day. Mm-hmm. And the S&P finished 92 points up for the day. So um, it's interesting because uh, September is usually a down month in the stock market. It was down. October is usually a, a good month in the stock market, especially during midterm election years. We spoke about this mm-hmm. before. Um, October to April is actually the best months for stock market historically during midterm election years. Um, but obviously there's a lot of different variables that go into play this year. So is this the start of a run or is this just a pump fake? Um, Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be the test. So historically, the market tends to go up on Mondays and Fridays. If we have a strong Tuesday and a strong Wednesday, it'll be a sign of strength. If we fall Tuesday morning, turn to CNBC before the market opens and see what the futures are set to do. If they're saying that we're down 100 points before the open, won't be good. Um, but Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be the test. I hope this is the start of a strong push, but we're not here to hope. Um, Tuesday and Wednesday would be the truth teller if we're going to go up or not. Yeah, I think it's tough to tell, right? Because the, the fact is that uh, causing an economic downturn haven't really changed, right? Inflation's still here. There's still a crisis uh, in Ukraine. China's still in COVID lockdown. Those things haven't changed. Um, yeah. And so it's interesting. When, when they say October, and we spoke about it before, but they, they call it, I heard, I saw it in the headlines today, the, the bear killer. And so like, th- these are the statistics that they're going off of. This is actually in um, the Stock Traders Almac. So uh, out of the 12 post-war World II bear markets that have ended in October, so that's 1946, 1957, 1960, 1962, 1966, 74, 87, 90, 98, 2001, 2002, and 2011, all of those bear markets have ended in October. Seven of those years were midterm elections. So obviously we know that we're in one right now. Um, So in the midterm October since 1950, the Dow has been up 12 out of six, 12 out of the six years. So been up 12, been down six on an average increase or appreciation of 2.6%. The S&P in that same time from 1950 during a midterm October has been up 13 times, been down five with an average appreciation of 2.7%. And the NASDAQ obviously started in 1971, has been up nine times, been down three. So the numbers point in our favor for the month of October and mm-hmm. the average appreciation is 3.1%. Just want to add that in there. But the economic factors that have caused it haven't really changed. So haven't changed at all, yeah. Could it be a pump fake? Yeah, this is, I, I feel pump fake, um, but perspective <laughs> is Kobe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Traders, yeah. be careful. Be careful. Do not, because we had a great day today, go in tomorrow and be like, hey, I'm just going to do calls and I'm going to trade the NASDAQ and ES to the upside. Let it play out in front of you. Um, and going to your point, I was looking right before we started to show, inflation in Turkey has went up 83%. That's the reported number. The real number is like 185%. It's not like all my crypto people, if I ever say anything bad about Bitcoin or Ethereum at any point, this is the ultimate case for definitely needing a hedge for international and global inflation. That is terrifying. Like imagine if you're a parent of two and you have to provide housing, clothes, shelter, if things go up 200% in two months. Yeah, at one point Zimbabwe had like 10,000% inflation. That like, it was like a million dollars for a piece of bread. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how the situation unfolds. History is on the side of a of a bull run. Mm-hmm. History is with us. Um, but this is unprecedented times that we're in. So we will see. But it did it did kick off the way mm-hmm. that it would you would think it would kick off yeah. historically. For the fourth quarter, yeah. For the fourth quarter, fourth quarter run. Uh, a few things are in the market's favor. History, the midterm election situation, mm-hmm. the month of October, mm-hmm. and the fourth quarter, because usually towards the end of the year, the stock market does better. So, so yeah. What are you about to say? So remember like when goes through Canaan in the building and he caught on fire, but Canaan survived. That's what the market's going to do. 
like it's going to make it out alive, but it's going to be terrifying. Um, it's going to be tough for a little, for a little bit of time. I hope that we push up, but it's going to 2023 is probably going to be flat at best. And I can't wait till Steve comes on so we can talk about Fed fund rates and all that kind of stuff. But we will push up, but it's going to be a hell of a battle to get out of this uh, danger zone that we're in. Let's talk about Tesla. So Elon Musk debuted, uh, well, show showcased Optimus, um, which is Tesla's robot mm -hmm. last week at Tesla's AI day. Um, and the idea of this robot. So from my understanding, the robot will be, will have a cost of $20,000 and it is designed to do everything that a human brain can do, such as process vision data, make last minute decisions as well as communicate. Um, so it's pretty much like a, a person, um, <laughs> and at $20,000, that's extremely affordable. Um, so how, it, do, how, how to play God's advocate? Well, I got to get to it before TikTok does it. I, I think it's extremely affordable as far as like, if I, if I'm, let's say I'm using this to, as a, to somebody that's working in a factory, right. To replace yeah. a job. Yeah. It costs a lot less to pay for a $20,000 robot than it does to pay somebody $60,000 a year and then pay for sick leave and then benefits. pay for medical benefits and mm -hmm. then pay for life insurance, stuff like that, which mm -hmm. end up probably being a hundred thousand dollars. So yeah. that's when I mean, it's affordable when I'm assuming most people that have these robots are going to be, they're going to be using these robots for, for jobs. Right. Yeah. So $20,000, you can't really hire somebody for $20,000. No, not in the States. Not in, not in America. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I mean by affordable. Um, but th their stock price was down today. Yeah. So wh what's the deal with Tesla? Uh, so the delivery numbers came in um, and it said they, they sold fewer than expected vehicles in the third quarter due to logistics hurdles with slowing outlook for economic growth, raising doubts about demand. So how bad do people still want the Tesla vehicles? Um, they slid down 9% after hours today, which mm -hmm. is interesting because that other company that we used to like destroy, uh, Rivian, mm -hmm. they, they're uh numbers actually went up six percent they actually i think they delivered like 7600 vehicles which is a little bit more than what they expected but i think it's interesting right they probably saw the forecast for that coming out on monday and that news came out during the weekend right the the robot thing i felt like that yeah. dropped like friday and so let let's let's create our narrative like let's get ahead of <laughs> let's get ahead of the news and the, the report that we know is coming let's give them some breaking news that they can run with because the numbers are going to be disappointing and um you know from an investing standpoint do we still love Tesla? I still love it, but you know, there's setbacks. Um, and this is why I said, like, when we're talking about, is it a pump fake? Like these are the, some of the economic factors that are still in place that are happening yeah. to good companies. Um, I, I think the robot uh, idea is fascinating. I think earlier this year or late last year, um, I had a stat of that by 2030, 50% of the workforce will be replaced by automation in some format. Who better to bring this initiative in and someone should research homework assignment if they are getting government funding to push this initiative through Tesla and through Elon. Um, as far as the demand for cars, the long-term demand would be great, but we are just, and I can't wait till they announce it so we can just like rip the bandaid off and just say that, hey, we're in a global recession. It's probably gonna take two or three years to recover um, so we can begin to fix some of the, the issues that we have been facing. Um, for the first time in a long time, man, I'm going to Tesla. Um, you going there? 130.79 is a place to load the boat. No, no, it never did. Oh, okay, okay. No, no. <laughs> like, wait, where we going with that? I should have yeah. should have drug it out for like a hot take, but <laughs> um, but no, 130.79 is where I'm looking to load the boat. If it does fall that far, I'll be incredibly elated but long term uh test is going to be fine for sure yeah i like i like that you said the the short-term effect uh because one of those things we had spoken about it about six months ago when we saw california um make it mandatory that uh zero uh emission cars will be banned by 2035 mm -hmm. the state that we are in the proud state of new york has also joined the initiative to make sure that there are zero emission vehicles by 2035 and so mm. if you know that when you talk short term and we talk about, well, then that must mean that we're moving into the EV space as a state and California, New York usually set the precedent for what's going to happen 
nationwide yeah. for most for the most part. Obviously, he's building a plan in Texas, so I'm sure they'll join on board at some point. Who's the leader in that space? Ding, ding, yeah. ding, 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 ding. Our robot, here we come. <laughs> Car, robots. Yes. It's gonna be interesting, man. Um, we are literally going through like a change in the guard economically, and the more data that comes out, the more terrifying it can be. But for everyone that is listening, um, please pick the four companies that you love dearly, buy them at the rock bottom prices that you can. And for everyone who missed out on 2020, you get a chance to get in probably at 2019 to 2018 prices when it's all said and done. I think we'll start to bottom out probably by end of year and push up, but it's going to be a turbulent takeoff to the upside. This, this day. Red Panda Anthem. Ian, what's up? This day. Red Panda Anthem. Red Panda, what's good?